All right, and here we are, right? So uh, right now I'm looking is at the how to secure yourself financially by take a closer look at the Morningstar Investing Classroom, uh, where the reason why I choose this is because, well, it all starts uh, asking a asking. Uh, it all starts by ask myself how can I improve my finance my finance uh, literacy right and with that uh, the whole idea is that first we'll look at some couple of sources what I can find then uh, first I look at the Investopedia uh, they have uh, an article uh, talk about is free and pay uh, course to do that for obvious reason I choose is a free course text based uh, from Morningstar so over the last uh, six months almost seven months uh, I start to understand a little bit more the feature content course especially staying investment in the market uh the important of see so the important by looking at historical data and uh, on stock market performance that makes a case for staying put rather than selling your investment to see how uh, small and large stock has provided the highest return and the increase in the wealth uh, in contrast with fixed income investment uh, the over vehicle such as uh, certified of deposit government bonds uh, treasury bill yeah. also i look at some uh, important and relevant con concept uh, such as return which is the earning on a security uh, or any other investment such as uh, dividends, uh, realization of profits, income, uh, principal, uh, which depending on the context, it is the original amount that you borrow that remain on pay, or the original amount that you borrow, uh, just like that. In the context of business uh, uh, relationship, or the context of business, it is the amount of assets, or it is the relationship uh, in which their assets are greater than it is liability. It's a principle. Uh, it also is the original amount of investment on a security, uh, and uh, in the context of banking is the original amount that you give in which interest will earn or will pay or will, will be paid so also i look at the uh, period of consecutive negative stock returns uh, and to see is the pattern that in 1929 1939 and 1973 during the oil embargo uh, performed by the Petro monarchy to the United States because they were supporting Israel forces. Uh, and in the 2000 uh, the dot com bubble, in all of those four instances, they have been uh, two or more consecutive years of negative stock return, followed by above average uh, positive return. This pattern is not guaranteed to repeat itself, but it can show you the market potential and the importance to having a strategy when you invest in the stock market or when you invest in something, right? So, the things to know for this is investor must have discipline and patience. Uh, and there are some couple tools that allow you to do that. 
uh, like uh, DCA and uh, diversify a portfolio. Uh, diver diversifying a portfolio means that you're going to spread your asset in different company, perhaps in different industry. The idea is to minimize risk as much as possible. And with DCA is to continue purchase uh, regardless price fluctuation or price volatility. So even though diversification doesn't eliminate risk and DCA doesn't ensure you profit or protect you against declining market from financial losses. I also look at the crisis and long-term performance, again, the idea here is to, by looking at the historical data from 1973 and how the stock market has, has performed, for example, uh, in this graph, the period of the consecutive negative stock return, uh, I mean, crisis and long-term performance, here, okay? So by looking at that graph and see uh, how this historical data not only is powerful because it can show you uh, it can inform you it can also reinforce your point of view but also it can be misleading uh, that's one of the important things when analyzing data to look up where is the source of that you know uh, and in this case, it comes, it comes from Morningstar. So by looking at that historical uh, data of the 19, uh, from 1970s to 2021, all right, and see that has, there have been several uh, market crash in 1973 during the oil embargo uh, to, the United, to the U.S., uh, the stock market crash in uh, the 1987, the dot-com bubble uh, in early 2000s, the banking and debt, or, uh, the banking and, cre and credit crisis in the 2007-2008. So the whole idea of looking at this is that holding on can pay off in the long run, all right? So, I also look at the uh, stock performing after the end of the recession, especially small stock or small cap stock, which are companies which market caps are valued uh, between uh, 200 million to 2 billion dollar. Uh, and most investors uh, fear to do that, uh, to invest that, but their fear might not just might not be justified because on average the accumulated return perceived the cumulative important here so on average the accumulated return perceived by small stock outperform those of the large stock after one month six months a year and three years after the end of a recession. The whole idea of this is by recognizing this pattern that are not guaranteed to repeat itself, but again, it can show you to make better, well-informed decisions, right? Uh, and also look at the history of interest rates. So, what is history? Uh, what are? What is history? Uh, what is? Uh, no, what are uh, interest rates? Uh, which is a percentage that indicate what more money will cost or uh, savings. What what borrow money will cost uh, or savings will be earned or savings will earn. Uh, so, for the simple example of this is well, it will cost you five dollars to borrow one hundred dollar if the interest rate is set at five percent okay cool cool now 
then Ooh. Cool. Now, um, I also look at that the interest rate is being used to uh, or the interest rate uh, responds to economic cycles and it is used as a leverage from the Fed to uh, if to stimulate consumer spending and to regulate inflation. So you have something called the loanable fund markets. Uh, this is much like in your family, when you ask loans for your parents, your benevolent parents uh, give you a percentage of the amount that you ask or that you borrow from it. Okay? Let's say $100. Uh, however, there are several interest rates reflecting loan from length or time and risk. So, example of short-term interest rates, and by short-term, I mean, uh, or here, uh, it means a year or less. So, example of short-term interest rates are the federal fund rate, uh, treasury bill, and one-year uh, government maturity bond. So, the federal fund rate is the rate at which, well, yeah, the federal fund rate is the, it's set uh, the federal fund rate is the interest rate. The federal fund rate uh, is, the in, uh, is the interest rate uh, at which commercial banks lend fund each other overnight. So to regulate that, uh, the U.S. Federal Reserve, which was founded in 1913, and uh, they have uh, some functions like uh, set the discount rate, the percentage rate at which a commercial bank asks for loan to Fed as the large uh, lenders, the lender of last resource uh, for a short time, okay, uh, and the prime rate, which is the rate at which commercial banks uh, charge for their most credit worth client, usually car companies and corporations. Uh, now, this uh, um, uh, the discount rate the uh, the prime rate it also oversees the national banking system it creates monetary policy uh, it prints money and also buys and sells government security bonds government securities so the federal fund uh, or the feds aim or try to regulate the federal fund rates by buying and selling government security in the federal open market. This is much like, like let's say uh, you asked 100 to your benevolent parents and they tell you you need to return them $105, meaning that they charge you is 5% for that loan, right? So they are benevolent and they tell you that. So you you are a smart person, okay, and you have several brothers and sisters. 
So your younger brother you wants to so you sell the dream to your younger brother and say, hey, you know what? Uh, you can have all the ice cream you want. Because only me is to return or give it to me 7% of that. And your younger brother says like, hmm, that makes sense. All the ice cream in the world. And you can do that to all your other younger brothers and sisters. Okay? So your parents say, hey, I don't want you to do that. To try to regulate that uh, instead of hitting you the bed out of you. Instead of get the shit out of you. Uh, they say, hey, uh, do you want to do that? I just want to be part of the exchange. The exchange that you're doing with your old, with your little brothers and sisters. And that is the way how, or at least it's an oversimplification of how they control the interest rate. Okay, because now your parent is in the transaction. Okay, the government is on in the transaction. And uh, when see that your, you, are selling this loan at seven percent your parents say hey no 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 I just want us to drop that I just want us to drop that and I have because I am the one who printing the money you know uh I just want us to uh, <clears throat> uh, lower your interest to your older brothers. How they do that? So, it will start to offering is a the same loan, $100, but instead of $5, instead of five interest rates at 3%. So, you, if you want to compete, you say, hey, well, uh, okay, what about uh, 2.9? You know, you have to drop that vastly and find a way to uh, try to repay <laughs> the percentage you want to. So that's an oversimplification. That's a great, and I think this is, this is a very illustrative example of that. And with that, uh, talking about the loanable fund markets and the things to know of the interest rate is that the federal uh, tried to set or the Fed set the federal fund rates or tried to set the federal fund rates by buying and selling government security in the open market committee or in the federal open market, right? So because uh, the Bond market is also affected, like uh, in the stock, like the stock market from the economy. So this interest rate on bonds uh, responds to the demand for loanable funds. So during an economic contraction, uh, the demand for loans uh, tends to decrease following uh, their interest rate. During an economic expansion, it's the opposite. People ask for loans, uh, making the interest rates to rise. That's that's very interesting. You know, that's very, very interesting. Because with that, uh, now uh, I'm starting to understand what is this market in terms of recovery, what does it mean is the contraction and expansion, uh, which Again, by looking historical data, and especially for investor who wants to have long-term investments, for example, retirement, it is very, very helpful. And also look at over time how risk decrease. Okay. So yeah, I look at the stock market contraction and expansion, and over the last forty-nine years. Uh, there have been 10 market down terms from 1973 to uh, 2021. All of this data is from Morningstar. And this 
contraction phase where uh, happens when the stock uh, oh, yeah. this contraction phase uh, it is a, a stock market cycle meaning a complete round in stock price uh, volatility or, or in stock price fluctuation Okay. So a complete round of a stock price fluctuation in this cycle or this contraction and expansion, uh, this cycle uh, vary in length and duration. So the graph show, uh, yes, contraction phase shaded um, yellow and expansion phase shaded uh, in green. So. A contraction is defined by a when the stock market uh, peak uh, decline from 10% or more. This is technica technicism. technicism. Uh, and this decline seems to happen at random phase as well. And the expansion measure is the performance or the recovery, cor correct. So the expansion measure is the performance of a stock of an index. So that's the expansion. The expansion measures the recovery. Okay. So expansion measures. So expansion measures the recovery uh, of an index. Okay, so expansion again, expansion measures the recovery of an index from the very bottom of the contraction from its previous peak and the subsequent performance until another uh, or until the next uh, peak level before uh, another 10% decline. So the whole idea is to understand what is a recovery, what is index and cycle here, right? So a recovery is a boom in the if it's a boom or an upswing in price security following a long decline. It, the term is also used to describe it as the uh, nation's economy activity the boom nation's economy activity and the index is the statistical reference of investment expressed as a percentage in a period of time the whole idea of the index is to measure progress so with that okay now that i know what is a contraction and expansion phase and uh, then i look at the market done turns and recoveries uh, again looking at historical data that can see or where you can get a better picture of the potential market performance and by looking at this data so the u.s equity stock and by equity okay so the u.s equity market and by equity we mean it's the total amount of assets minus it is liability uh, yeah, the total amount of asset minus its liability. That's the equity. The network of a company. Okay. The network. Yeah, the network of a company. Hmm. Yeah, the network of a company. Okay, so equity is the total amount, the total asset minus its liabilities. The uh, okay, the network of a company in the context of business of company, the network of a company, the amount of share you own from that company. And the value of the property minus it is liens. So when I talk about liens, or what, what I 
deep, dive deep into the lens is the legal right that someone else possess to seize any pro your property or any asset that you have until a debt is repaid or an obligation is met. Okay? That is a lien. And to me, it's like, what the fuck is gravamen? Mm, uh, something like that. It's un gravamen. Uh, so, this is equity. This is what it means, equity. And also, there are different type of liens that you have is um, banking liens or bank liens, service liens, uh, judicial liens, uh, but the whole idea of this is that look at this historical data of the U.S. market equity and the done terms and recoveries that there are several of them, there are very no, several number of them, uh, and of different level of severity, so in the most severe was at the start of the Great Depression, which was a period uh, when the stock uh, when the stock lost over eighty percent of more it lost it lost over eighty percent of their value. To be precise, eighty three point four percent of their value. Uh, and the recovery side was a period over 12 years. More recently, uh, stock lost 44.7% during the early 2000s uh, or the dot-com bubble, bear market, or they mean a bear market, okay, a market characterized by falling security price as opposed to a bull market. Where price rise, the term may refer to the market itself or to the period of time when the stock are declining in general. A bearish outlook is one in which the market is thought to be failing. Um, yep. Maybe something interesting here. Maybe something interesting here. To take note. I'm not So, okay, the whole point of this is that since this is historical data, where one of the powerful things of data is that allows you to inform, persuade, and reinforce your point of view, but also can be misleading. So, by looking at this market terms and recovery, and the most severe of 
from the U.S. equity stocks that happened at the start of the Great Depression in 1929, when the stock lost over 80% of their value, specifically 83.4%. Uh, the recovery period, period was over 12 years. The recovery period was over 12 years. And more recently, uh, stock lost 44.7% in the early 2000s, which is the dot-com bubble. The recovery uh, period uh, lasting four years. And in the 2007, 2008, bear market, the banking and debt crisis, stock loss 50.9% uh, uh, of their value. And the recovery after that, or yeah, the recovery was uh, of 37 months, three years and a couple months, three years and one month. So by looking at this pattern, it's like, ask yourselves, like, do you have really the time to wait for the economy to recover itself? Do you really have that time? Do you really want to wait for that? Did someone else actually do that? That's a question. That's a question. So, the things to know of this, okay, is stocks are prone to sudden loss in value for many different reasons. Great. So that, all right, uh, I have to talk about is, it is evident that the stocks are prone to sudden decline in value. So this decline seems to happen at random times and there are many different reasons for stock market crash and bear markets. Sometimes stocks recover their value weekly, while other times the decline lasts for a while. And this lasts for a while is like, no, man. <laughs> this is easy to read and hard to experience. So investors should have patience, okay? The recovery period may be painfully long. Grateful mentioned that. So the recovery period may be painfully long. Often the decline is preceded by a period of high returns which lulls investors into a false sense of security. Because no one can predict market decline with certainty, a diversified portfolio may be the best solution for a long-term investor who is concerned about both return and risk. It's the best solution according to Morningstar. Uh, and the return of principal, uh, returns and principal investment in stocks are not guaranteed. Diversification does not eliminate the risk of investment losses. So after I look at this historical data of U.S. equity market, uh, the downturn and the recovery, and for how long... Uh, the most severe, which is the Great Depression, and the more recent, like in the 2000 and the 2007 and 8, at the the first of the, the early 2000 it was from the dot com bubble, and the 2007 to 8 it was uh, from the banking and debt crisis. So the whole idea of this uh, is that long-term data can also show patterns in market performance. Can is not guarantee. Okay? Uh, so long-term data can show patterns in market performance. Often, these patterns are related to broader economic activity. Analysts can use the data to support predictions about future market trends. So, now that I look at the market in terms of recovery, and here is looking uh, 
at acid class and done terms. Okay. Uh, this score looks at done terms and recovery with respect to the asset class involved, whether there are bonds, treasury bills, small stocks, large stocks. Okay. So, first I look at the market in terms of recovery and now orientate to asset class. Okay, they now oriented it to asset class. Okay, cool, cool. Um, so yeah, this is a mm, too much, too many text, too many text, too many text, too many text. So bond deals are driven by factors such as supply and demand for loans, monetary policy, and inflation rate. So we're talking fear. First, about bond yields during recession. When we talk about yields, I think is the earning, right? So yields mean is to give for by nature process, especially by cultivation. The first is as return for off for effort or investment. Be productive of. Yeah, the return for effort or investment. The return of effort or investment yield. Mm, now, this is in engineering, geo. In Spanish, geo. Mm, this is a very specific, uh, but I think this is contextual. Geo. Rendimientos. Mm -hmm. In the financial aspect, yes. Returns. Mm. Bond deal. Okay, let me look at the definition, depending on the context here, from Marian Webster. Deal. To bear or bring forth as a natural process, especially as a result of cultivation. The three always yield good fruit. Mm. Supply. Okay, but this is British. The three always yields good fruit, good, good fruit. So to produce or furnish as return, the soil should yield good crops. To produce as return from an expend, expenditure or investment, furnish as profit or investment. A bond that yield twelve percent to produce a revenue, bring in. The tax is expected to yield million. To bear or bring forth as natural product, especially as a result of cultivation. To give up possession of a claim or demand. To give up possession of a claim. Okay. To give or render as fitting rifle own or require. To give up a hit or run in a baseball. To give up. Gilles two round in the third in the third inning. Intransitive verb. To relinquish the floor of a legislative assembly. To give way under physical force. And to give Placing or, or precedent to be inferior, to give way to or become success, to see by someone or something else, to be fruitful or productive, bear, produce, yield as a noun, something yield, especially the amount of quality produced or returned, yield of wheat per acre, uh, the amount of quantity produced or returned. The capacity of dealing products, the dealing produce, uh, transitive verb and intransitive verb. So, but in this context, is as return or yield, bond yield during recession. 
Okay. Uh, so I'm going to wrap up this section here. And with that, uh, I'll see you in the next episode. Take care. Bye-bye.